Hemophilia is a genetically transmitted disease which largely affects males. Uh, females are the carrier. In the United States, there's about 20,000 people with either hemophilia A or hemophilia B. Around the world, there's about 400,000 people affected by hemophilia. It's about one in 5,000 live births of males. Uh, there are other bleeding disorders which similarly afflict both males and females. The most dominant one is called von Willebrand's disease. And the community has experienced uh, a wealth of investment in research and development and new products that are continually improving the lives of people with hemophilia. Uh, just over the last five years, We've had extended half-life factor eight and factor nine products introduced into the marketplace. Just last year, a disruptive therapy from Genentech called Acuzumab, uh, which bypasses the coagulation cascade has been brought to market, uh, which promises even better results for many patients with hemophilia. And probably within the next 12 to 36 months, there'll be multiple companies bringing gene therapy products to market. So it's really remarkable that over the 42 years I've been in this space, we've gone from cryoprecipitate to factor concentrates to highly purified extended half-life concentrates to soon gene therapy, which is almost a cure for hemophilia. And as I mentioned earlier, there's only about 20,000 people in the United States with hemophilia. So you have to wonder why this level of investment? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, there's a great deal of interest uh, at the pharmaceutical level in the technology around bringing a gene therapy product to market. Uh, so hemophilia, because of the size of the factor IX molecule, was an obvious first target for testing the viability of gene therapy, not just in hemophilia, but in a wide range of diseases. As you heard earlier today at the Rare Disease Conference, there's something like 600 different compounds in various stages of clinical trial for a wide variety of diseases. All of that started in the hemophilia space uh, going back 25 years ago. Uh, but I think the other reason for the investment is a very active patient community uh, who have insisted on investment in hemophilia. And we were one of the original rare diseases, if you will. Uh, there was actually a way to treat hemophilia. The patient community was organized. Uh, the manufacturers in this space uh, were committed to making lives better for people with hemophilia. And the result of all of that investment uh, is really paying off, not just for hem people with hemophilia, but people with different chronic and rare diseases around the world. 